Good morning, our students, and uh, welcome to our class. This morning, we want to look at real-life example on how to estimate a time series trend. We have been talking on components of time series, particularly the trend, and how to measure the trends. Now, we, are, we have equally talked about measurement of trends using the approach of least square method. And today, we have a real-life example on the board where we are going to show our audience or listeners how to effortlessly obtain your time series trend and use the trend or the equation to make a prediction or to make a forecast of the future value of the series. The question we have on the board here says, calculate the trend value by the least square method from the data set below and estimate the sales for year 2012. So by implication, the data we have here is talking about the sales against these years. So it is a time series data first of all because these observations which stand for sales were recorded against this uh, time. And we did say earlier that a time series is a set of observations that are recorded against uh, time. That was our primary definition of a time series during the introductory aspect of our class on time series uh, analysis. So in year 2006, the sale is 12. 2007, it is 18 down the line. They ask us to use this information, fit a time series watch trend on this data, and use this trend which we have fitted on the data to predict the sales on in 2012. So as a word of solution, we have this. That this is our year, and remember that this year is talking about what of time. Year here is time 2006, time 2007, time 2008. And that's the reason why here you saw that I wrote, or you can see that I wrote year here or T. This is 2006, 2007, down to 2010. Here is my says, and this my says can be written as what? Y subscript T. Because time series observations are recorded against time, and it is often denoted by Y subscript what T, standing for observation at time T. Okay? So you have says, which can be written as Y subscript T, 12, 18, down to 27. Now, this are uh, time 2006. We will not work with this time 2006, 2007. We are going to assign because in year 2006, where someone begins to take observations, you might decide to call that year 2006 as time one where you started taking the observations. So we are not necessarily going to work at what 2000, with, with 2006, 2007. We want to assign values to those in 2007, 2006, and the rest of them. And here, we are choosing the origin to be the value at the center. The origin of this, our data set, we want to choose the value at the center. And the value at the center here is 2008. And if you see what I wrote here, I wrote X equals t minus 2008. Because the interest is to make this value which I have chosen to be the origin to be zero. That is the interest here. Okay, so if I have t minus 2008 here, my t here is 2006. So if you say 2006 minus 2008, you have minus two. You have 2007 minus 2008, you have minus 1. You have 2008 minus 2008, you have your zero, which is the target. To ensure that uh, the center which you have chosen 
turns out to be zero, which is the origin. You have 2009 minus 2008, which is one. You have 2010 minus 2008, which is what, which is two. So this, our X here, stands for what? For our time now. The time at the origin is zero. Okay. The time backwards should be minus one and minus two. The time up front should be one and the two. Then we come here. This is my time squared, which is minus four squared, minus two squared, four, minus one squared is one, zero squared is one, one, sorry, zero squared is zero, one squared is what? One, and two squared is what is four. Here we are having x, y. I can put subscript t here. What we mean here is we are using the says to multiply the time. So we have 12 times minus 2 minus 24, 18 times minus 1 minus 18, 20 times 0 is 0, 23 times 1, 23, and 27 times 2, 54. We are to sum these columns here. Look at this column for t. Look at this column for y of t. If you sum all this observation, it is 100. You sum all this observation, it is 0. You sum all this observation, it is 10. You sum all this observation, it is what? It is 55. So we now come, in order to estimate our trend, remember that our trend is given as y cap is equals what? A cap plus B cap what? X. This Y of T. So uh, this is the trend which we are required to find. I don't know the value of uh, A cap. I don't know the value of what B cap. We want to estimate the value of A cap and B cap using the approach of what least square. According to least square, the formula for B cap is given like this. And the formula for A cap is given like this. And if you watch here, what, what I have here is x multiplied by y subscript t. And here I already have x multiplied by y subscript t. Here it's talking about as you sum it, and the sum is already 35. So here now becomes what 35 all over. Here is my x raised to power 2. Here is my x raised to power 2. It is talking about sum. The sum of x raised to power 2 is already what 10. So this thing becomes 35 over 10. 35 divided by 10 will give me 3.5. Then I come to the value of what of a cap. So my a cap here is now going to be sum of y sub t all over what? All over n. Where n is talking about the number of what data points I have, which we call the sample size. My y sub t is talking about what we see across these years. So I should sum the says, and when I sum the says, I got a 100. So here is going to be what 100 all over 5 because the data points I have is what are 5 in number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it becomes 100 all over 5. 100 by 5 will be able to give me what 20. So what I have now becomes what? That now y cap subscript t is now going to be 20 in place of what the intercept because the intercept here is 20. So I'm no longer going to write a here. I'm going to write 20. The sign here is plus. Here is plus. The value of my beta cap here is already 3.5. So here becomes 3.5. And therefore, y cap subscript t is equals 20 plus 3.5x is what I call my trend line or my equation, time series equation. It is with this equation that you'll be able to make a prediction of the future values of this series. And do remember that we were asked to find the value of the says in 2012. So first of all, we return back to this R data set. Okay? We now ask ourselves. In 2008, the value of our time here, we assigned it to be what to be zero. In 2009, the value of what of a time here is what is 1. In 2010, the value of a time here is what 2. It implies that in 2011, the value of time here should be 3. And in 2012, 
the value of my time here should be what should be four. Therefore, in this 2012, where they require me to find the value of what says, the value we are assigning to time in 2004 is what is four. In 2012 is what is four. And by implication, once you come to this your trend, anywhere you see x, you are going to remove x and replace with what with four to enable you find the says in that particular year. So what you are now going to do becomes what? That your white cap at 2012 is going to be 20, which is this 20 of intercept plus. 3.5, which is the value for slope, look at 3.5, you open a bracket. X is now going to be what? 4, which is the value of time in 2012. And then you'll be able to say 3.5 multiplied by 4 added to what? To 20 will give you 34. So 34 is the says in 2012. And if you come over here, you see this is what? 12, this is 18, this is 20, this is 23, this is 24, and 7. So somehow, somehow, we have increasing sales, which of course we can say increasing trend. So as the years is increasing or the time is increasing, the value of sales will equally be increasing. That is the much anybody can see here. If they ask you to find the value of sales in 2004, or find the value of sales in 2003, for instance. You know, 2003 is not captured by this data set. But you have been able to use this data set now to fit a time series trend. So with that trend, you can have the forecast of future values and equally be able now to predict the likely values of the sales in these years in the past. The interest here is in 2003. So you come here, you ask yourself a question. In 2008, the value is zero, of time is zero. 2007, the value is minus one. 2006, the value is minus two. So in 2005, the value should be minus three. In 2004, the value should be minus what, four. In 2003, uh, the value should be minus what, five. The value should be minus five. So it is minus 5 now that we are going to place in place of this word x. To say now 20 plus 3.5 times minus uh, 5. Okay? So if they ask you time in the future, you go this way. If they ask you time in the past now, you go this uh, way. If they ask you for the value in 2005, it is minus 3. You are going to use minus 3 here to find the values. So, first of all, this is a trend line. If you are asked to fit the trend line, once you arrive at here, you stop. You must have fit your time series equation or time series uh, trend line. If they ask you to use the trend line to make forecasts, then for 2012, then you now tell them that in 2012, the value of your time is 4 based on what I had earlier explained here. And then you now say 3.5 multiplied by 4, whatever value you get, you add it to 20, and that gave us a 34. And then this is the value of a 6 in 2012. Now, we have used this data now. We have fitted a time series word trend. We have made a choice of what of origin to be zero. What if somebody decides not, not to make the choice of origin to be 2000 and what of uh, an eight? What if the person decides that his origin is going to be 2000 and what six? And that he's not even going to use zero as the origin, that he's going to use one as the origin. Are we likely going to arrive at the same answer? When someone decides to use the origin as 2006 and even calls his origin one, not even zero. And then use it now to form the value of the, of what of the time. When the person makes what estimates, or when the person now fits trend what line, and use that trend line to make a forecast, is that person going to arrive, arrive at what at 34? We are going to see this in our next video, where we are going to use the same data sets, but a different approach on how to fit what the trend line. And using the trend line, 
to make a prediction or a forecast to know whether we are going to arrive at what at uh, 34. Therefore, stay connected, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube what, video, video or channels in order to follow our classes. Stay tuned for the next class where we are going to see whether what I have explained is going to be right or wrong. Thank you very much.